this again is a big lesson for everybody when it comes to just clinch work to begin with. Strikes are always going to be available. It may not be your standard striking of I'm going to punch, I'm going to heel palm, I'm going to throw elbows. It may be something as simple as I'm going to headbutt, I'm going to drop a low elbow, I may use my shoulder. So you might have to get a little bit creative with how you strike the person, but strikes are always going to be available. Now, the important part when it comes to situations like this where you're tied up, especially bear grabs, whether it's the front, side, the back, is you have to understand how to position your body to the point where you can create space and you can frame properly. And then from there, you're able to get out of the position and go on from there. Once you disengage completely from the position, because as you create space and you frame, you're gonna have the opportunity to disengage. If you wish to dis disengage completely and use that as an opportunity to run, then by means run. If you disengage and for whatever reason you need to re-engage, whether it's with strikes, clinching, takedowns, whatever it may call for in that situation, then you re-engage. But all of these are gonna provide you with opportunities. Does that make sense? From the front, now, the best thing to understand when it comes to bear grabs is understanding how the pressure works in these situations, okay? What is the ultimate goal of somebody coming up and squeezing you in these positions? Is he just gonna stand here and squeeze me? No, eventually you're probably gonna do what? take me down or pick me up or something, right? Eventually, we're probably gonna end up in some sort of ground position. But for now, he's squeezing and holding on as tight as possible. Now, most people that are gonna do bear grabs, are they gonna try and maintain this close contact or are they gonna have their hips far away? Far. Close, because as he goes farther away, what happens to the pressure? It starts to loosen up, right? As he comes close, notice how my back starts to get arched a little bit more. Now I'm feeling the full tension, but the tension is not up by my head, the tension is down towards my lower back, right? That is where you have to start shifting your focus to. Now, in order to do that, again, we have to focus on framing and creating space. Yes, I can strike, I can bite the person if I wanna bite the person, I can work knee strikes if I wanna work knee strikes, but all that is gonna do in my eyes is use that as an opportunity to create space and to start working my hands in. Now, eventually, I wanna be able to get my hands on his hips. If he's grabbing that tight where I physically can't, then maybe I throw a knee strike and I slide my hands here. Because now I know he's gonna do what again? try and pressure back into me. Well now, because my elbows are here, he can try and move his hips as close as he wants, but my hands are in the way. And as my hands go here, my hips start to do what? Work out. And as I start working out, I have now created space. Wonderful thing it is, okay? Now, I can do this in a slow motion if he's really squeezing, or I can do it in one big push, okay? Now, I'm not pushing his hips. I'm locking my hands, stiffing my arms, and I'm pushing my hips back. That's the creating the space that I need. Now, your head is also important in this because I want to make sure that I'm driving my head into his face to start also kind of getting his head and pressure going in a different direction so that he can't pressure back into me. Now, once you've got into this position, you have a couple options, especially because my elbows are here. I can simply dip and come under. And now I can work side angles here. I can start working cross body two on ones and eventually I can work myself to the back. Obviously he's gonna be fighting back in that situation but it allows you to get underneath. If we get back to this position again, I can simply elevate and just start working off to a side position to where now I'm a little bit more in side control. And again, I can work cross body grips. I can work headlocks. You can start throwing your strikes from there. But now that I've been able to work off of these positions, now I have the opportunity to disengage completely and throw whatever strikes I need. Or like I said, if we get to these positions and I need to take them down, I can take them down, but at least I'm in a dominant position. Does that make sense? Now, if he gives you under the arms, same idea, I gotta make space, but it's not as easy for me to just scoop my hips up because again, he's gonna suck me right back in. Hands to the head. Start working your hands in. Now, I do not wanna lean back like this and start trying to fish in. I have to put pressure to get him to move back. This is where like your eye striking and stuff comes into play. This isn't gonna end the fight, but it may get him to turn his head a little bit, which allows me to work my arm in here. Or if I can pull his hair back a little bit, that allows me to work my hand in here. Now I can post on his face, post on my forearm, and now as I work my hips back, as he goes to pull me in, because I have his head going in a different direction, it's very hard for him to suck my hips back in. Everything else follows from there. Now I've broken the grip, now we can, again, either completely disengage, you can arm drag and come back in, I can turn it into a Russian tie, so you have options from there. But it all comes from what? Creating that space and framing. Make sense? Side, uh, from the back, same idea, we'll start with under the arms, okay? Do not sit here and fiddle around with fingers. Especially if the guy's got a nice tight grip, I'm not gonna sit here and try and fiddle around with fingers because I'm never gonna get it. If for whatever reason he has like a thumb or something that's sticking out and it's just completely hanging out and it's open, rip it, that's fine but do not depend on that stuff. Now, I know I've taught you in the past 
that when you're in these positions, go ahead, grab tight. When we're in these positions, I drop my weight and we start working our back steps, right? So if he, relax for a minute. If I work my back steps, this idea of stepping in or working all the way around, right? If he's grabbing as tight as he can, he's never gonna let me get back here. And as I try and step, he's able to just constantly step and move his hips, right? I can't step behind him. But instead, if I put pressure on the hands and again, work my hips away, now, if I do decide to step back, I created that space so it allows me to step back. Okay, grab on as tight as you can. I start making that space, get my hips away. So now I can work back if I need to. Can't stay in this position though. Start working strikes, tie up with this person. Even better would be if I can get to the point where I've completely separated the hand. Now from here I have options. I can step, turn, and re-engage if I need to. I can step, turn, turn this into arm drags and come into the back, turn it again into Russian ties, or you can simply just completely turn, work your strikes, and catch them off guard. But all that comes with what? Getting our hips away from their hips and making space, correct? If he grabs you over arms for whatever reason, similar idea, again, latch on, get a little bit heavy. Obviously, I'm not gonna be able to pull down on this, but just by me holding on, because I can get my hips away, that allows me to step and drop my weight. Whereas here, if he's grabbing on as tight as I can, and I just try and turn and drop my weight, I'm just going in place. Hips away, and now turn. Even if at this point he tries to step back behind me, I can now start working. I can post on this arm, I can post here. Now I can start working these grips, and now I've got full control. Does that make sense? So clinch situations like that, where someone's tying up with you and they're grabbing you nice and tight. Framework and space. Are the first two things you have to start doing. Break that space and framing, post, get your post done, and then we capitalize off that. Make sense? Let's go.